So we're going to take a look in this video at how to use Bohr's energy equation to solve one of the harder problems in the first unit of grade 12 chemistry. Um, in this question, we're asked to find the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation that would be emitted, released, when an electron falls from a level 6 to level 2 in hydrogen. Now we know that to do this problem, we're going to make use of Bohr's energy equation. So let's just remind ourselves of what that equation said. It tells us that the energy of an electron when it's in the nth level within an atom is equal to negative 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18 joules times z squared over n squared where Z stands for the atomic number of the element, and N is the energy level that you're referring to. So since we're told that we're dealing with hydrogen, we can go to a periodic table if we have to, and remind ourselves that for hydrogen, Z is equal to 1. And we're going to um, calculate the energy for level 6, level 2, then we'll find the difference between them, and then we'll use Planck's equation to find the wavelength. So there's three basic steps here. In the first step, let's jump in and calculate E6, the starting energy level, and E2, the final energy level. So E6 will be negative 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18 times 1 squared. The atomic number Z for hydrogen is 1, divided by 6 squared, the energy level that we're dealing with. We'll grab a calculator and let's see, turn it on and clear here. So negative 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18, and then times 1 squared doesn't really do anything, but divided by 6 squared will give us negative 6.06 .06 times 10 to the minus 20 joules, and that's the energy of the electron in the sixth level within hydrogen. Do the same thing for level two, negative 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18 times one squared over two squared this time. It's still a one on top because we're still dealing with hydrogen and so the atomic number is still a one, but now we're dealing with the second energy level, so N is a two. Grabbing our calculator again, we get negative 2.18 times 10 to the power of negative 18 divided by 2 squared equals negative 5.45 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So there's the energy that the electron had at the beginning, E6, and the energy it had at the end, E2. And we're going to now find how much energy it lost as it fell from level 6 down to level 2. And then we'll take that energy and we'll put it into Planck's energy equation to find the wavelength. So let me erase some of the work that I've just done here. Okay. And actually I'll erase all of this. And here we go. So step 2, we're going to find change in energy. In fact, we're going to do an absolute value of that as the electron goes from level 6 to level 2. Okay? With absolute value just means we're going to make the answer positive. So that's equal to the absolute value of the final level, where it ended up, level 2, minus the starting level, which was level 6. So looking back at my calculator for a minute, since I've erased it, level 2 was negative 5.45 times 10 to the minus 19 joules minus E6, which was negative uh, 6.06 .06 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. And we want the absolute value of that, so we'll make the answer positive. So going back to our calculator, I've already got the negative 5.45 already entered, so I'll just type minus negative 6.06 .06 times 10 to the minus 20 equals, and I notice the answer here is negative. It's negative because energy is actually being released. It's being lost. 
If the electron were jumping from level 2 up to level 6, the answer here would be positive, 4.84 times 10 to the minus 19. But we're going to take the absolute value, which means we're going to ignore the negative sign in the front, and the answer will be 4.84 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So notice when you take the absolute value, the number negative 4.84 simply turned into positive 4.84. Finally, in step three, we're going to take Planck's energy equation. Planck says that energy is equal to hc divided by lambda, and we are rearrange that equation to say that lambda, the wavelength, is hc divided by e. So plugging in our values for Planck's constant, h 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds, multiplied by the speed of light, c, which is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and then divided by e, where the e here is our delta e that we just calculated, 4.84 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Grabbing our calculator, we'll take 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34, multiply by speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, and divide by the energy change, which was 4.84 times 10 to the power of negative 19. It's always a good idea to take a look at your calculator screen before going on, just to make sure you've typed everything in properly, including those negative signs with the exponents. Equals 4.11 times 10 to the minus 7, and that'll be a wavelength that's going to be meters. If you look at our units, joules cancels with joules, seconds and per second, and we're left with meters, which of course is wavelength. If you were to switch that to nanometers, and you don't have to with the way the question was worded, you could just leave it here, you could multiply that by the unit multiplier one nanometer is one times 10 to the minus nine meters, and you end up seeing that that's equal to 411 nanometers. Since visible light goes from 400 nanometers up to 700 nanometers, this will be in the range of visible light. And further, since it's very close to the 400 nanometer end of the visible spectrum, we can say this is actually going to be a violet line. So if you were looking at the visible line spectrum for hydrogen, you would see a violet colored line at 411 nanometers, and that particular line in the line spectrum is due to electrons falling from the sixth energy level down to the second energy level within hydrogen. Of course, that means it starts starting in an excited state, and it's still finishing in an excited state, in hydrogen, the ground state would be to fall all the way back to level one. So in this case, we're still going to be excited after the electron has made this transition. So if you understand these three steps to doing this problem, and you can do, do it all in your calculator without making any silly mistakes, you're doing pretty well, and you can definitely expect a question like this on your unit test and on your exam.